All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking in Vion at Desa. And this has got to do about the standoff between Russia and the West because of the Russian deployment of troops along the border with Ukraine. Now, what is interesting is that the United States has now sent has said that it will be sending as many as about 3,000 American troops to Eastern Europe in the coming days. The United States has said that the troops have not been deployed to fight in Ukraine, but to ensure a robust defense of NATO allies. In response, Russia has called the American deployment as counterproductive and destructive, which will actually increase the military tensions in the region and will also reduce the scope for political decision-making led by negotiations. Our next point gets you all the details. The Pentagon will send nearly 3,000 more American troops to Eastern Europe in the coming days amid a tense standoff with Russia over Ukraine. The United States will soon move additional forces to Romania, Poland, and Germany. Defense Department spokesperson John Kirby said the troops were not going to fight in Ukraine, emphasizing they're going to ensure the robust defense of our NATO allies. The deployments are above and beyond the 8,500 troops the Pentagon put on alert last month to be ready to deploy to Europe if needed. And the moves aim to reassure jittery NATO allies nervously watching a massive Russian military buildup near Ukraine while avoiding new deployments to Ukraine itself. Our commitment to NATO, Article 5, and collective defense remains ironclad. Efforts to reach a diplomatic solution have faltered in recent weeks, with Western countries describing Russia's main security demands as non-starters and Moscow showing no signs of backing down. Russian President Vladimir Putin spoke about the Ukraine crisis publicly on Tuesday for the first time this year. In his remarks, Putin laid out a worldview in which Russia was the victim, not the aggressor, and that Washington was trying to lure Moscow into war. His biggest objective here is, is Ukraine back into a Russian sphere of influence. And the only way he's going to do that is uh, through military means. His calculation is... Can he get away with it? Alexander Vindman is a retired U.S. Army lieutenant colonel and former director of European affairs for the U.S. National Security Council. He told Reuters the U.S. was doing the right thing in bolstering NATO and signaling Russia would pay a price for any aggression. But he said the moves might be too late. Part of my re remaining criticism with the U.S. approach right now is that it's all contingent and reactionary based on what Russia does. We could have done more. We're doing a, a pretty exceptional job now uh, later in the game uh, but I think it's I think unfortunately uh, the die may have been cast. The Pentagon said it had not ruled out further troop deployments. All right now to give us more insights in terms of what this deployment by the Americans would of course mean for the tensions that are unfolding along the eastern border with Ukraine we're joined in by our correspondent Stuart Smith who's joining us live from Moscow this hour. Stuart, thank you very much indeed for joining us in this broadcast and beyond. Now, let me begin by asking you this. This latest announcement by the Americans that they will be moving about 3,000 American troops. They'll be deploying them not to fight, but actually to strengthen the NATO alliance in Eastern Europe. How is Moscow responding to this? Not well. Uh, Russia and the spokesperson for the president, Dmitry Peskov, said that this uh, is proof that Russia had reason to be worried with these troops coming east and Russia concerned that NATO is not just an defensive military alliance but an offensive one. There was reaction in the parliament as well. One, uh, one lawmaker in the lower house said that it's an absolutely destructive step that complicates the situation in Ukraine and damages the fragile negotiating process. A senator in the upper house, he said it's an, an attempt to test the firmness of the Russian position and to get on its nerves. So clearly not a good reaction to the troop deployment. It never would have been. It comes, as you say, when negotiations are sensitive. But the, U uh, the NATO Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, says NATO needs to be ready for whatever happens. There isn't an explicit risk presented by Russia to NATO military allies. Russia is well aware that an attack on one ally is an attack on all of them. 
and seems unlikely to want to risk that, having already ruled out aggressive action against any country, including Ukraine. However, it is a message that America is sending to Russia. Notably, of course, though, this is not a deployment to Ukraine itself, although the US has been deploying uh, or has been sending equipment to Ukraine to help it defend itself. Absolutely indeed. And also I want you to weigh in in terms of how Russia's deployment has been ongoing uh, in this crisis. We are given to understand there are well over 100,000 troops that are stationed. There are also military exercises that Russia is carrying out in Belarus. And there's also a build up in Crimea as well. So a lot of military analysts were looking at the manner in which Russia has been moving about its troops. They say that Russia could be preparing for a three frontal assault on Ukraine at a moment of its choosing. What is Moscow saying to explain as to why it has amassed so many of these troops and also in the manner that it has done so? Yeah, well, Moscow, first of all, has denied that it's even moving troops close to Ukraine as a policy to try to increase leverage. It says that everything that's going on are simply military drills. And notably, the events most recently in Belarus, where the second phase of military drills take place between Russia and Belarus. Again, these are to test the readiness of long distance operations. A lot of these troops, equipment and supplies have come from the Eastern Military District. That's seven time zones east of Moscow from near the Chinese and Mongolian border. They've been brought right across Russia to help. And that, the Russian Defense Ministry says, is to test their readiness. The Ukraine Ukraine um, intelligence services predict around 115,000 troops are now surrounding Ukraine, which does pose a concern for Ukraine. But it's come out repeatedly in the last few weeks to say it doesn't perceive the threat as imminent in the same way that the United States has been using. The US says it will now no longer use that word imminent because it's been so frustrating for Ukraine. Ukraine's worried that although there is this massive military troop buildup undeniable with open source satellite information, it isn't being considered as an imminent invasion. Ukraine's particularly concerned that its economy is going to suffer with all the talk of imminent war. And as one high level diplomat in Ukraine put it, it cannot feed its pensioners with military hardware. The damage that this rhetoric does to Ukraine's economy is just as damaging as a potential military invasion. Absolutely indeed. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Stuart Smith, for joining us and getting us all those updates there. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.